Hey there, fellow geniuses. I'm currently walking on the campus of one of the world's great universities. All around me are brilliant students. People in these laboratories have advanced degrees. Some of the professors are world famous in their specialties. And here I am, walking on this beautiful campus. When I first stepped foot on a university campus over 40 years ago, I remember being awestruck at how smart everyone appeared. I felt like I would never measure up. But let me tell you something that might sound ridiculous the first time you hear it. Despite all their supposed education, most people here, myself included, are pretty average in their general knowledge and abilities. The thing is, most people don't think this about themselves. In fact, most people believe they are above average. For example, a poll conducted on the faculty of one university in the United States showed that around 68% of the faculty members there believed that they belonged to the top 25% in terms of their teaching ability. And 90% of them thought they were above average. That's kind of impossible. Research conducted on a group of software engineers showed that around 42% of the participants rated their skills among the top 5% of their coworkers. But not just people who are highly trained in something believe this. Surely, you're an above average driver, right? Many drivers overestimate their driving skills and underestimate the risks associated with driving. This leads to reckless driving, accidents, and even fatalities. In politics, people with limited knowledge about politics often think they deeply understand the issues and tend to express strong opinions. However, when asked to explain their views, they often fail to provide coherent arguments. In music, some people think they have an incredible singing voice or musical talent, but they lack the skills or abilities necessary to succeed. This can lead to embarrassing performances or misguided attempts at pursuing a music career. And she tossed like she was, she bangs, she bangs. Oh baby, when she moves, she moves. I go crazy cause she looks like it. In science, people with little understanding of scientific concepts may think they know more than they actually do, leading them to make inaccurate or unsupported claims. This is particularly true in debates about climate change or vaccines. And in health, people often overestimate their knowledge about health and wellness, leading them to make misguided decisions about their own health or the health of others. For example, they may refuse to go see the doctor when they have a pain or insist on some sort of alternative treatments without scientific evidence to support their claims. Why is this? Why are so many people overestimating their abilities in so many areas? Well, this phenomenon has been dubbed the Dunning-Kruger effect, the psychological phenomenon explaining why some people are convinced they're experts even when they're not. The Dunning-Kruger effect was first identified by two psychologists, David Dunning and Justin Kruger, in 1999. Dunning and Kruger conducted a series of experiments in which they asked participants to rate their own performance on tasks that range from simple ones to more complex ones. They then compared these self-assessments to the participants' actual performance on the tasks. The results were shocking. Participants who performed poorly on the tasks consistently overestimated their abilities, while those who performed well tended to underestimate theirs. Dunning and Kruger theorized that this was due to a lack of metacognition, the ability to accurately assess one's own skills and knowledge. In other words, people who are less skilled or knowledgeable in a particular area are also less likely to realize it. This can be particularly dangerous in situations where individuals are making decisions that could have serious consequences. A related phenomenon is called the illusion of explanatory depth. The illusion of explanatory depth refers to the tendency for people to overestimate their understanding of complex concepts or systems, such as how a car engine works or how a political system operates. Despite feeling confident in the ability to explain these concepts, people often struggle to provide a detailed or accurate explanation when put to the test. The illusion of explanatory depth can have negative consequences, particularly in fields where accurate understanding and knowledge are essential. 
such as science, medicine, or engineering. For example, if engineers overestimate their understanding of a complex system, they may fail to identify potential risks or vulnerabilities, which could lead to catastrophic failures or accidents. The Dunning-Kruger effect and the illusion of explanatory depth can have profound impacts on decision-making. When individuals overestimate their abilities, they may be more likely to take risks or make decisions that are not in their best interest. They may also be less likely to seek advice or listen to feedback from others, believing they already know everything they need to know. For example, imagine a business owner who has no experience in marketing, but believes that they can create a successful marketing campaign without the help of a professional. This business owner may waste a lot of time and money on a campaign that's ineffective, ultimately harming their business. Another example can be seen in politics, where politicians with little expertise in a particular area may make decisions that negatively impact their constituents. They may refuse to listen to experts or scientists who can offer valuable insights, believing that they already know what's best for their constituents. Now, there are several explanations for why all of this happens, and include the following. The first is a lack of metacognitive skills. One explanation for the Dunning-Kruger effect that I've already mentioned is that people with a low ability lack the metacognitive skills necessary to accurately assess their own competence and knowledge. Metacognition refers to this ability to reflect on your own thinking, evaluate your knowledge and skills, and regulate your learning. Without these skills, people with low ability may be more likely to overestimate their own competence and knowledge. Another explanation for these phenomena is that people with low abilities may have a confirmation bias, which means that they seek out information that confirms their existing beliefs and ignore information that contradicts them. This can lead to an overestimation of their own competence and knowledge as they only pay attention to information that supports their beliefs. Another explanation has to do with inexperience. In some cases, people with low ability may simply be inexperienced in a particular area and lack the knowledge and skills necessary to accurately assess their own competence. They may also lack the perspective and feedback from others that comes with experience, leading to an overestimation of their own abilities. And I'll throw in one more explanation here, and that would be degrees and other certifications. You know, people get certified or degrees in all sorts of different things, like to be a barista or maybe a plumber. They may get a license to practice therapy. They may have a college degree or even a master's or a PhD. Does that mean they can now pontificate about everything? Certainly not. For example, a PhD generally means that a person conducted research on a very specific topic and then wrote up a thesis about that very specific topic. In my case, it was about social comparisons between friends and strangers. Now, does that mean I have expertise about parenting or schizophrenia just because I have a PhD in psychology? Of course not. And depending on where you got your training for the degree or certification, you may have been more broadly trained than somebody else or more narrowly trained on a particular topic. However, I believe many people become prone to the Dunning-Kruger effect once they have some sort of credentials because they think they are now an expert on many things, but they really aren't. So overall, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a complex phenomenon that various cognitive biases and factors can explain. Understanding these explanations can help us better understand how the human mind works and how we can avoid the negative consequences of this bias. Well, now that we understand the dangers of the Dunning-Kruger effect, let's talk about how we can avoid falling prey to it ourselves. The first step is to recognize that none of us knows everything. This is known as intellectual humility. Intellectual humility refers to the willingness to recognize the limits of one's knowledge, to admit when one is wrong, and to have an open-minded attitude towards new ideas and perspectives. It involves being able to accept and learn from criticism, recognizing that one's beliefs and opinions are not infallible, and valuing the insights and contributions of others. Intellectual humility is a crucial aspect of critical thinking and intellectual inquiry. Without intellectual humility, people may become closed-minded, defensive, and resistant to new information or ideas that challenge their existing beliefs. By contrast, those who practice intellectual humility are more likely to engage in thoughtful, constructive dialogue and to pursue knowledge and understanding with an open and curious mind. There's always more to learn, and we should be open to new information and feedback from others. We should also be willing to admit when we don't know something 
and be comfortable asking for help or seeking advice when we need it. Another key strategy is to cultivate metacognition, the ability to assess our own skills and knowledge accurately. This can be done by regularly reflecting on our performance and seeking feedback from others. We can also take steps to improve our skills and expertise through training, education, and practice. It's also important to be aware of our biases and actively work to overcome them. We all have biases that can impact our decision making and make us overestimate our abilities. But by being aware of these biases, we can take steps to mitigate their impact and make more informed decisions. And finally, we should surround ourselves with people willing to give us honest feedback and challenge our assumptions. This can be difficult as it can be uncomfortable to hear that we're not as knowledgeable or skilled as we thought. However, it's essential if we want to grow and improve. But wait, before I finish this off, could the Dunning-Kruger effect be helpful? I think it can be in some cases, particularly when you're sort of new and ambitious and you're trying out new things. Like for instance, if you really stop to over-evaluate how well you can sing, you might not try out for certain activities, you might not audition uh, because you're so worried about your singing. I do believe that having a little bit of the Dunning-Kruger effect in all of us kind of helps us go out there a little bit more and not cause us too much self-doubt that would keep us from trying new things. But as you can see from everything I've been talking about, I think overall the Dunning-Kruger effect is harmful. And not having intellectual humility, not recognizing that you do have some weaknesses that need to be improved, that you could use some more training, can only help you. In conclusion, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a powerful force that can impact our decision making and lead us down the wrong path. By understanding the science behind it and taking steps to avoid it, we can make better decisions and achieve our goals more effectively. I hope you found this video informative and thought provoking. And if you have any questions or comments or even some suggestions about how we could all avoid the Dunning-Kruger effect, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you want more great content like this. So thanks so much for watching and until next time, be curious.